reporter from WRC-TV, was asking questions about Martin Luther King's birthday and the progress blacks have made in society. Hang on. Let's paint the picture of society at the time. It was the year 1988. Martin Luther King Jr. had been killed almost 20 years prior. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. America is shocked and saddened by the brutal slaying tonight of Dr. Martin Luther King. Sports reflect the times, as they say. Muhammad Ali had his title stripped for refusing to step forward when his name was called to serve in the Vietnam War. Bill Russell won title after title for the Celtics and became the first black head coach in NBA history, while simultaneously, racist fans in Boston rooted against him and defecated on his bed. He was an activist and a civil rights icon. Arthur Ashe, for all his dominance in the world of tennis, protested in the 80s against apartheid South Africa. He was arrested for it. And in the 1980s, a sports gambler named Jimmy the Greek Snyder started making his name. Here in Las Vegas, they put the odds on everything, on every type of sporting event, on anything that you can think of in the casino. And he had America hooked. After all, his picks would make headlines in local newspapers. You like the Broncos a little bit at home on Monday night, Green? Yeah, but I'm not that crazy about them. I, I thought you were a little bit that. reluctant about that. <laughs> He'd say, somebody has to be the one for the betters to follow. It might as well be me. Born in Steubenville, Ohio, Jimmy the Greek Snyder worked his way up. He placed his first bet at 11 years old. He'd bet on everything from football and baseball to presidential races before it was mainstream. Most importantly, when he got his shot, Snyder received approval from then NFL commissioner, Pete Rozelle. There was a catch. Point spreads were disallowed. Instead, use how many points the Greek thought a team would win by. In 1974, he was pardoned by Gerald Ford after being previously convicted for interstate gambling. He had been given a second chance, then on MLK Day. Here, CBS sports commentator Jimmy the Greek Snyder gave his impressions of blacks and coaching in the National Football League. The slave owner would, 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 would breed his big black to his big woman so that he could have a, a, big, a, big, a big black kid. See? And Snyder said, that's why blacks excel over whites in sports. These comments would cause, in short, a firestorm. The black is a better athlete to begin with because he's been bred to be that way because of his high thighs and big thighs that goes up into his back. Pretty soon they're going to have to equalize it for the blacks, for the Greeks, the Jews, and for everybody. I mean, let's make it equal for everybody. You know. And uh, is it equal? What about in sports? Well, they've got everything. If, if they take over coaching like everybody wants them to, there's not going to be anything left for the white people. I mean, all the players are black. I mean, the only thing that the whites control is the coaching jobs. Now, I'm not being derogatory about it, but that's all that's left for them. CBS Sports immediately acted, firing Snyder shortly thereafter. His comments made headlines. He would give what writers called a heartfelt apology after his comments aired and picked up steam throughout the country. However, Michael Wilbon of the Washington Post printed that apology. I want you to listen to everything that was said and then you make your own decision as to what I said that was wrong. Longtime NFL media member Mike Freeman would make it clear Snyder and folks like him thought black athletes were not bright enough to lead. Not to mention were also apparently buoyancy deficient, he wrote. The shame is not only that the Greek said what he and others like him have believed all their lives, but that he doesn't understand what he did wrong or how it could offend people, Wilbon wrote in his column. Sadly, the beliefs by the Greek and former Dodger Al Campanis, whose comments we covered previously on this medium, prove this ill-hearted ideology remains in front offices for NFL teams in present day. As we sign off, comment down below what other deep dives you would like to see.